Hi, this is Soft Cell Video Productions with your host John. In this episode, we're going over the finer points of wiring a recording studio and monitor room. I've wired five recording studios, so I know a little bit about this. Let's start at the source and work our way out. The breaker panel is where you can get off to a good or bad start. A good start is to have your panel independently grounded from the main panel. From there, you want to mechanically isolate your ground bar from your neutral bar. This keeps any neutral feedback from contaminating your grounding wire and vice versa. You want to use MX wire only. In a home studio, you can use Romex or UF, but don't be tempted. Also note that you never want to use 12.3. Shown here is 12.3 Romex. This is a double no-no. With 12.3, your neutral is shared by two circuits, which can cause phase variances in your neutral return and thus affect your recording equipment. Use only 12.2 MX as shown. It is fully metal covered and shields against electromagnetic radiation. From here on out, referred to as EMR. You want to divide your circuit into five categories. First would be the actual recording studio outlets. Second would be the monitor room outlets. Third category would be accessory outlets. For things like fans, fog generators, or lighting that uses a step up or step down transformer. Here's a tip. On accessory outlets, use colored outlets so you don't accidentally use them for musical equipment. Number four would be lighting circuit. Lighting circuits can be shared between the monitor room and recording studio, but never share them with any other room. Last is the dirty power circuit. Keep these away from both the monitor room and the recording studio. What is dirty power? That is power that feeds air conditioner, microwave oven, refrigerator, bathroom exhaust fans, or anything that would produce EMR or also a drop in voltage. What is clean power? That would be a circuit that has one neutral per breaker, is well grounded, has no exposure to EMR, and will never have a voltage drop of more than 3%. Let's move on to the actual recording studio. Use only four outlets per 20 amp breaker. You can space these up to 12 feet apart, but I recommend that you install them with a specific plan you have in mind. If you don't have a plan, then just go with an outlet for every six feet of usable wall space. You also may want to consider floor outlets, but these need to be planned before you even pour your foundation. So if it's in a pre-existing building, you're out of luck. Accessory outlets should not be installed any closer than 12 inches to studio outlets. All outlets and switches should use metal covers no exceptions. Use metal boxes for all of your electrical devices whether it's in the studio, kitchen, or bathroom and whether it's being used for lighting, special effects, or musical equipment. Metal is the only way to go. As you can see from the pictures, these boxes come with extensions that will accommodate extra layers of noise abatement material. One thing I want to mention here, and this is really important, when you're pulling wire into your switch, light, or outlet boxes, always leave 18 inches of wire coming out of the box. This will accommodate numerous box extensions and allow you to easily fold the wire back into the box once the device is hooked up. Before I forget, I would like to add here that data cables should be mapped out, and there are no code guidelines to draw from. It is important that you label all of your data ports, install more than you need to, and most importantly, use shielded data wire. It's expensive, but will give you crystal clear sound. There are some items that are poisonous to a recording studio and downright venomous to a monitor room. And what would these be? First, fluorescent lights followed by neon lights. These things are EMR factories. Next is lighting dimmers. These are miniature EMR factories. Use standard light switches that are grounded. I only recommend four types of lights. Track lights are my favorite. They are directional, put out no EMR, and produce no vibration. Pennant lights are nice and wall sconces are kind of classy. Ceiling lights are also good. That's the four types. Recess cans, they're okay. But if you use them, you want to use silicone sealant on all the mounting rails and movable parts. Otherwise, when your volume reaches 11, you're liable to get vibration from them. And that ain't too cool. One last item for the recording studio. Don't forget the recording light for the outside door. 
the monitor room you can pretty much treat like the recording studio except you might want to run your outlets a little closer together again no dimmers fluorescent lights no cell phones either turn your cell phone off or leave it in the green room before you enter the monitor room I recommend a body search for cell phones on hot looking babes it's a well-known fact that hot babes are sneaky for floor covering, use a thin rubber backed carpet to reduce the possibility of static buildup. And recessed cans are okay, because even if they rattle like a snake, the noise will never be recorded. Support rooms. Any circuits run to these rooms can be shared with each other, but must never be shared with the recording rooms. Microwave ovens, refrigerators, exhaust fans, or ceiling fans should be kept away from the recording rooms. I'm going to finish this the same way that I started it. Make sure everything is grounded really good. That's about all I can think of, but if you can think of something else, you're always welcome to comment on this channel. No pre-screening, no censorship. That about covers it. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.